Um, we hear and see you. Great, perfect. And we have the presentation there. Everything works perfect, thank you. Thanks for letting me know. Thank you very much. Um, it's a great honor and pleasure to speak to you. Um, as I also have interviewed some of you for my master's thesis. So now I can finally present you the results. Um, of course, hepatitis C needs no introduction. I just want to quickly recall that hepatitis C virus was discovered six years after um, HIV was identified and it never received the same attention. And from the beginning, hepatitis C was um, heavily stigmatized and was related to drug users. And then since 2014, hepatitis C can be easily cured with a success rate of almost 100%. However, this historical medical breakthrough was overshadowed by astronomical prices of the medication, which you probably all remember very well. So then the FOPH um, introduced a limitation which was only lifted in 2017. So for my study, I applied the multiple streams framework by Kingdon, which some of you might know, since this framework is frequently used to analyze health policies. It basically helps to explain why certain ideas and issues makes it onto the political agenda, while others are neglected and never appear on the agenda. So as you can see, there are three streams that flow independently from each other and they only get coupled once a policy window opens. And this policy window presents an opportunity to get an issue on the agenda. However, this chance is easily missed. And therefore, a so-called policy entrepreneur plays a crucial role in this model. He is the one that actively monitors the three streams in order to seize the rare opportunity of an open window and then pushes his pet solution. So if I start with the first stream, the problem stream, for problems to be perceived as such by decision makers, we either need a focusing event like a financial collapse, for instance, or an indicator like an alarming statistics. But of course, as Kingdon notes, Problems are often not self-evident by the indicators. They need a little push to get to the attention of people in and around government. And there's also something else that Kingdon um, uh, noted, or he makes an important distinction between issues. There are on the one hand side conditions and then we have problems. So a quote from him. Conditions become defined as problems when we come to believe that we should do something about them. How do, condi how do conditions come to be defined as problems? Values, comparisons and categories contribute to the translation. So in the policy stream, in the second stream, ideas are being generated by experts and specialists. Ideas that survive must be technically feasible and easy to implement. They also need to reflect the values of the community. And of course, the costs must be acceptable. Sorry. Lastly, we have the political stream, which reflect things as the public mood and changes in government and the administration. So the method I um, apply the document analysis and also is made semi-structured interviews with 11 experts from different fields which were conducted in fall and winter 2019. So now we turn to the problem stream which looks for hepatitis C as follows. So on the one hand side we have epidemiological data which is not robust. Studies were only performed in sub-populations and this had implications because when the new very expensive medicine arrived, the official estimates were 80,000 infected people. And because the FOPH feared that all those affected would seek treatment within a very short period of time, they introduced a limitation. The numbers were later on reduced to 40,000. On the other side, there are relevant gaps in the cascades. 
of care since many people are not diagnosed and diagnosed people are not linked to treatment. And the advance of medication enhanced research activities which resulted in a new view of the disease. Hepatitis C is no longer only a liver disease but a systemic disease. But these new insights were not shared and accepted by all stakeholders as one quote from an employee of the FOPH shows. Where a big discussion has developed in the professional world and between us is whether asymptomatic hepatitis C is worthy of treatment or not. If someone is only infected, only the carrier, should one really treat him or not? And this automatically leads to the question, do we have to look for them or not? So this view of the FOPH regarding treatment stands in contrast to what most hepatitis C experts recommend. And the statement does also not correspond to international guidelines because they say that all persons um, should be treated irrespective of their liver damage. So now we turn to the policy stream. In the policy stream, expert created the vision of eliminating hepatitis C by 2030. And this vision was already developed as soon as the new medicines were inside, not even on the market yet. And in order to reach that goal, a Swiss, Swiss hepatitis strategy was launched by a multi-stakeholder network. And it was the express wish that the strategy would also be supported by the FOPH ideologically and financially, but the administration didn't want to participate. The first step then was to get the limitation removed. Some pressure was put on the pharmaceutical industry when a so-called buyer's club was supported to help Swiss patients to get their medicine from India. The limitation was finally lifted in 2017 after the prices had been reduced by half. Since there are many since there are expected to be many unreported hepatitis C cases, and since there is no sound epidemiological data, the idea of a screening of the population was introduced. However, the costs and implementation were sticking points, and not all stakeholders supported this idea. So then as an additional idea, the integration into the national HIV program and international uh, and HIV structures was proposed. We now turn to the policy entrepreneur and its role, which changed over time, or rather there was no actual policy entrepreneur until 2015, because until then the experts remained among themselves and the research stayed more or less within these circles. In 2017, the Swiss experts in viral hepatitis changed its name to Swiss Hepatitis and it became an advocacy organization. Specialists from other fields as well as patient representatives were brought on board. So we had, so medical evidence was translated from scientific language to, broader, for, to a broader public. Awareness campaigns were launched. Relations with journalists were cultivated and the dialogue with politicians was sought. This new role was unusual as this quote from one of my interviews shows. A media release must always have a certain touch in order to be taken up by the media. I think that is a double edged sword because everything we finally published still had a certain inaccuracy. Sometimes you can make false hopes. In the political stream, there were no major leadership changes in the Federal Council or among senior officials at the FOPH. However, the president of the Federal Commission on Sexually Transmitted Infections changed during that time. And then a natural window opened up when the National HIV program came up for renewal. This was a chance to get hepatitis C on the integrated in the HIV structures. With such an integration, relevant resources would be made available for the elimination of hepatitis, and many synergies could be used between these two very similar diseases. And while the 
FOPH did refuse such an integration, politicians who had been in year-long exchange with Swiss hepatitis became active. A motion asking for integration of hepatitis into the National HIV program was launched in the state, in, in the state council in 2019 and got approved this spring. At the same time, the Federal Commission on Sexually Transmitted Infections elaborated in close collaboration with Swiss Hepatitis a roadmap for elimination of HIV and hepatitis for the attention of the Federal Council. So what were the main factors that led to this favorable situation? We have the problem stream where so the new Therapeutic, therapeutic options from 2014 onwards made the potentially fatal disease a curable disease. And this was a prerequisite for a reassessment of this issue as aspects that had not been equally important during the interferon era suddenly came to the fore. Like the fact that epidemiological data were lacking, that a large proportion of HCV patients were unaware of their infection, that access to treatment was limited due to cost. And this turned the condition that had existed for three decades into a problem that not only should be solved, but also could be solved. Then in the policy stream, because of these new therapies, more funding was made available by the industry and more research was done. This new evidence painted a different picture or a more detailed picture of the disease that hepatitis C is a systemic rather than just a liver disease with corresponding implications for the therapeutic indication. And this in turn called for new approaches. So the experts in the policy stream came up with several ideas and solutions on how to reach the vision of eliminating hepatitis C. And one of the solutions that were seen as being technically feasible and easy to implement was the integration of hepatitis C into the HIV structures. And in the political stream, thanks to the established dialogue with some health politicians and the data that was provided to them by Swiss hepatitis, the political landscape was already in favor of supporting hepatitis C. And with these politicians who were willing to become engaged in this matter, it was finally possible to create a counterbalance to the administration the FOPH that had not shown much commitment so far. And a decisive point was that CEFEP or Swiss Hepatitis, which until then had mainly acted as a consulting and expert organization, became an organization that was broadly committed to the public health aspects of hepatitis and also had the general public and the politicians inside through media work and meetings with health policymakers. So Swiss Hepatitis was able to bring these three streams together and to use the policy window that opened up. Because when the renewal of the National HIV program came up, the po policy entrepreneur saw this opportunity and was ready to seize it. So from this case study, we see what aspects are crucial to address. Um, first, we need a sound epidemiological data because with the false prevalence data, this had led to unjustified restrictions. And until today, it remains unclear how many people are infected and where to find them. Then of course, we need funding and not only from the industry, and also we need a committed FOPH because it's difficult to tackle such a public health problem without the support by the administration. And also the crucial role of a policy entrepreneur because these new studies and facts that came, were made um, could be presented to the politicians and were convincing. And it was the first time that the politicians and the federal council decided to act upon it. So to achieve a change in public health policies, experts are needed who are ready to translate the evidence from a medical language to a common language and share it with the broader public, the media and the politicians. Or in the words of Kingdon, and we heard this today already, 
the data do not speak for themselves. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>